Welcome to Cayo Perigo. Wait, you don't remember Cayo Perigo? The island where you make so much millions by robbing El Rubio? You don't remember? Oh, oh, wow. Memory must be very short for you. Anyway. <coughs> This heist, this heist DLC, has had many ups and downs. It has had foreshadowings, it has had good things, and it has bad things. But, uh, let's reminisce a bit. <sighs> Remember Miguel Madrazo? English days, Gustavo, you know, oh well, shit, what a shame to not remember the man who asked you to rob El Rubio in the first place, your own helmsman of your submarine, the man who introduced you to El Rubio, and the man who finally, after years of being inconvenient to El Rubio, got eaten by the Panther. And by the way, Gustavo, the reference to a much earlier PC game. If I remember correctly, that was my city. Anyway, look what a beautiful island it is. See? In the tropics. Friendly wildlife nature. Okay, runway, cars, guards, drugs, money, gold, paintings, better bonds. The Madrazo family history. Pink diamond, ruby necklace, and a Panther statue. Ooh, and for those who actually managed to see it, Nessie. Anyway, all these fond memories. Also, all these. Bad memories. Because this heist not only had its many, many good things, like the, uh, the different types of loot, and the different types of approach you could use, but So, the error, mistakes, controversy. You could stand right here in the finale, hidden from plain view, still alert to God. Same guard that you could spike water supply to make them in the center. The 
this hangar, but like you, into this hangar. Rubbish. Now we'll be applying. But also the same guards that while the game promised promised they would have less attention, less notification of you, would suddenly become super alert, super attentive at night during a thunder thunderstorm. When the player should be covered by the night and by the noise and the rain, the guards suddenly decide they want to be superhuman. But it is just one thing. Let's not forget all the time that we should have been able to get what we want and it was made impossible because somehow we've lost access to just what we want just what we needed a good point. At least we could start out very low level a moment. At least the first time. Every subsequent moment, every subsequent time we wanted to rub our Rubio again. It's harder. And sometimes it would be so damn easy we could speed run it. There are people who claim they can sit up and fall this entire height in less than 40 minutes. Oh, which is such a shame. Just look at this island. Why would you want to rush when you have such beauty in nature to look at? Beautiful island. Such waves. Spoiled by man and its need for power. Need. Uh, well, okay. <coughs> apart from this, and apart from the reference to GTA <coughs> by City in Travel, yes, I will now say for certain it is GTA by City we are referring to. This new DLC also foreshadowed the DLCs coming after it. 
you may not have noticed, but the first time boot up after this DLC was installed, we were pulled in to the new nightclub underneath the casino. And we had a new DJ performing there. This DJ turned out to be Moody Man, part of the next DLC known as Tunis. Now, is that clever from Rasta to hide the clue to the next DLC in my sight? <coughs> well, they were even more clever, or so they thought. And they set a second clue to a new DLC in this DLC. Because, first time you travel to this island with English Day, you'll have to meet at the LSIA for the plane set to depart for this island. <coughs> set, <coughs> sorry, set to depart for this island. Well, it doesn't leave <coughs> just like that. Of course, there's a photo shoot of some nice lady. But, we also see Dr. Dre show up. But, he has to, has to uh, return home. Because, his phone inside his car is stolen. And, well, this phone contained almost everything he was still working on. Huh? It was a nice little scene, but uh, little did you know, this was actually the foreshadowing of the next big DLC known as The Contract. If you haven't played that, well, there's no better time than to play it in the car. Anyway, those were the two force getting I uh, wanted to discuss. One thing, one thing Rockstar removed from us is the possibility to steal one of those dinghies and race boats that keep moving back and forth on the ocean along the island. You know why? Very simple reason. The speed running again it made it too easy to uh, get the elite challenge every single time after the escape by just simply killing the drivers of the boats and escape with them. Yeah, so they took away the easy option. Made it much harder because if you do alert the guards, if you do alert the compound, then unlimited guards, unlimited choppers, unlimited boats are suddenly hunting you. And it is a really good survival. Look, and first it may be a cakewalk, then it suddenly becomes survival. One of the many things Rockstar did to make it harder. <sighs> and, oh yeah, I almost forgot. This DLC also brought us some nice side missions. In his day, even after he is 
car can still give us missions to complete our kind of music. Missions that require us to get to the island. Well, not like Panga Boy's Ibiza, just this island. Well, and if we complete those missions, we will get a reward. And this music also gave us several challenges outside of the Elite Challenge, which uh, has been played but not at really high. Okay, some extra challenges, really nice ones. Let me give us medals, tattoos, clothing, and money. And who does not like money? Well, someone who does not need it. Anyway, this was a short retrospective. Thank you for watching. And goodbye. Remember, stay frosty, unlike me.